We know this is going to cause an inconvenience to commuters. That was day one, December 11th, hours after the Rhode Island DOT decided to close the westbound side of the Washington Bridge. Today, we mark day 100, with the bridge now permanently closed and several hundred more days before a new one is open. All right, let's give you a live look here at the backup on uh, 195. This is at India Street due to the bridge breakdown, and it's been 100 days of hurt for some local restaurants. The bridge closure and resulting traffic negatively affecting their sales and their employees. Jake Holter joins us live from East Providence with that story. Jake. Well, Shannon and Mike, when speaking with East Providence restaurant owners, they say business is a shell of what it used to be. E.P. Wieners just up the street from me was a ghost town when we went and checked it out. I'm the only one here working because there's no, no money to come in to pay anybody and there's no people coming in. It's just really, really sad. Nothing but empty tables at E.P. Wieners at 5 p.m. on a weekday. Robert Rankin, the only person in the building when 12 News went inside, who says the bridge breakdown has caused business to dry up on Taunton Avenue. About maybe 40, 45 percent of our sales we've lost a weekly. Um, he's thinking of opening up late nights come April 5th to try to make up some of this money. But like even after a certain time, there's like no traffic on the road over here. Nobody wants to come down this way no more. Further in town, Davenport's restaurant also seeing a sharp decrease in sales. I mean, we've been down between 15 to 20 percent, which is a big number. And again, I think the biggest problem is, is the unpredictable what's happening, what the next day is going to bring, even the day. We've had certain days people come in. We have certain days no one comes in. Greg Davenport credits other local businesses for hosting banquets at his restaurant, which he says has helped them stay afloat. We just don't have the volume like we used to. I mean, before you'd have lines on Friday and Saturday nights. Now we find like it's busy, but it's not even comparison what it was before. Local hospitality officials asking people to help these businesses out however they can. These people are your neighbors and they're your family and your friends and we need you to go out and support them. Um, purchase a gift card. If you don't want to sit in the traffic, purchase a gift card and use it later. But please, 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 you've got to continue to support these local folks. And coming up on 12 News at 6, you'll hear from business owners across the bridge over in downtown Providence who say they've taken just as big of a hit. Reporting live in East Providence, Jake Coulter, 12 News. Jake, thank you, and please stay with 12 News for continuing coverage of the bridge breakdown and the two-year projected timeline to replace the westbound side of the bridge. Plus, find all the latest updates on our website, WPRI.com. First tonight, it's been 100 days since the Washington Bridge breakdown with many more days to go. I'm Shannon Heggie. I'm Mike Montecalvo. The traffic has been putting quite the strain on local businesses. Now they're facing a couple of more years of this. Jake Holter checked in with some of them today. Today, Jake. Well, Mike and Shannon, for restaurants in downtown Providence, Friday nights used to be one of the big, busiest money makers of the week. But now, with that gridlocked rush hour traffic going over the bridge, sales have taken quite the hit. All it takes is one fender bender to really impact the entire economy of the state of Rhode Island. Bob Burke owns Potafu in downtown Providence. While a popular date night spot, he says more and more often people end up canceling their reservations because of the bridge traffic. We're getting calls from people who are on the highway, getting off at the next exit, turning around, going home because they're encountering this massive traffic snarl. And his isn't the only downtown Providence restaurant that's taken a hit. After 3 o'clock, we used to get crazy busy, and as you can see in here now, it's not. You know, we used to be uh, have a line out the door, and uh, we've definitely been feeling the effects. Harrison LK says all the restaurants under Chow Fun Food Group have seen sales down close to 20%, which has a domino effect on the staff. You know, when sales are down for the restaurant, sales are down for the servers, which means tips are down, which means busters are, tips are down, which means, you know, I might have to let a dishwasher go home early or a line cook go home early because there's just not enough, um, you know, business to keep them there. We never thought we would come out of COVID and then have to climb a mountain just as steep as the COVID mountain. And that is what restaurants and other businesses are facing right now. And these restaurants, along with the Rhode Island Hospitality Association, are asking folks to help out in any way they can to help this sector of the economy stay afloat. Reporting live in East Providence, Jake Holter, 12 News.